of that spot move backwards. They flip flop picks, uh, you know, in, in the draft as well. Uh, the second round, I should say. Uh, so it was a good move for the Eagles, I think, to get a second round pick next year, because like you said, they were really just drafting for depth. Uh, you know, they have a roster that is pretty set. And even Stefan Wisniewski, uh, the Eagles guard, tweeted out afterward. He goes, the Eagles pick a 32. Nah, we're good. We don't need anybody right in the first round. We're loaded. So, uh, you know, they are. They have a good roster. So they're looking at depth. So in the second round, after they got, uh, you know, a second-round pick from Baltimore this, uh, you know, in this trade. Uh, or I'm not Baltimore, but, uh, yeah, Baltimore. Uh, they, they ended up taking a tight end, Dallas Goddard, uh, who will replace Trey Burton, who left in free agency through that touchdown pass. Uh, in the Super Bowl to Nick Foles, and that's a play that will be famous forever. Uh, but Burton left for Chicago. Brent Selleck uh, was released, probably going to retire. So they drafted a kid, Dallas Goddard, from South Dakota State, uh, who, who can be another weapon uh, in that Eagles arsenal, and I thought that was a great pick for them. Hey, Rick, let's talk, uh, guys, let's talk a little bit about the New York Giants. The New York Giants number uh, two pick overall uh, went with uh, Penn State stud, Saquon Barkley, uh, and then, of course, uh, I believe they also picked up Lorenzo Carter, linebacker for Georgia. Uh, what uh, signal, Rick, is uh, the, the Giants sending? Well, I think they're, they're sending the fact that they're, they're, they're behind Eli Manning. They're not concerned about Eli Manning leaving. A lot of people think that with the Jets uh, uh, drafting Darnold, uh, that that's going to be a huge thorn in their butt where they're going to have to look across the city uh, for the next few years and watch themselves get beat by the Jets because they did not draft Darnold. What are your thoughts? Saquon Barkley, number two overall, and I know they picked up a linebacker out of Georgia, uh, Rick. Yeah, you're exactly right. It, it just means that they're still all in on uh, Eli Manning, uh, putting a – another dynamic piece uh, with him along with Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, they're they're going to try to make one more run here at the, uh, you know, Eli's got two Super Bowl titles. Uh, they're going to try to make one more run, run at that while they have him. And, uh, you know, add back on the uh, Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen. Uh, we saw last year uh, when the Bills made the playoffs and guys were showing up in their Mexican wrestling luchador mass and body slamming each other through tables if josh allen can bring more wins to buffalo uh and we get more highlights like that on the mothership and other, other highlight shows i think that is a win for football a win for us sports fans and probably a win for america all the way around so, so you like the you like that wwe uh uh, oh, that was uh, great! Football is that it? Yeah, <laughs> they they played down in Houston, right during that game. What what is going on out in the parking lot at SR uh, NRG Stadium in Houston? I, yeah, I think yeah, I think that's where it was. Yeah, um, but you know, I, I don't think Buffalo fans care about that. They just want to see the guy we take him to the playoffs and oh, right. the Patriots and you know win a Super Bowl. You know, and then he can do whatever he wants. Uh, so if we know, get more high field. flying, more high flying Buffalo luchador wrestling fans uh, <laughs> into the parking lot, so we get those highlights. That, that's that is great all the way around. Yeah, right. I agree. And uh, the 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 Bills Mafia, if you will. Hey, uh, Ed, I want to talk with you a little bit about the New England Patriots, and I think we see a lot of craziness going on with the Patriots. Uh, uh, Brady's back, Gronk is back, Belichick is back. The feud continues. Um, a lot of people did not like the fact – I thought it was funny myself, but a lot of people did not like the fact that um, Gronk was uh, basically uh, – he, he, he had some sort of paid sponsor event that he did with a motocross or something, and they were asking him coming back, I'm going to be as fast as a, as a motocross racer. In other words, there just seems to be a lot of uh, – people are just a little uneasy with the New England Patriots – What's happening with their future? Is their dynasty about to fall apart? Help us uh, break down the New England Patriots as you see them in 2018. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of drama, you know, around that team. And uh, I said last year, I guess in February, when for the Super Bowl, I think I came on this show and I said I think this game has the potential to be a passing of the torch uh, to perhaps the Philadelphia Eagles or to another team in the NFL. The, you know, the Patriots run to me is over. Tom Brady, there was a question whether he'd return. You know, that story sort of surfaced that, you know, he was thinking about not returning. He's 41 years old. Um, you know, realistically, how much more can he play? And, uh, you know, New England did not draft a quarterback 
I don't believe in these first three rounds unless I miss something. So, you know, who, who's, who are they going to groom to fill in? They had Jimmy Garoppolo. They kind of came away to San Francisco, but uh, you know, to me, it's the, it's the beginning of the end. It may even already be the end. Uh, you know, they do have a terrific team. They, I think they made some pretty good moves in the off season and, you know, they still have Belichick and, uh, you know, they still do have Brady, even though he's 41 and Gronkowski's got all those uh, concussion uh, issues. And, uh, but they did lose Matt Patricia to uh, Rick's Lions. Uh, so their defense, you have to wonder how that will be under a new coordinator. And, um, you know, to me, I just think the Patriots window is, is closed, if not closed at this point. But you have to wonder who in the AFC is poised to rise up and, and be that team. It could be the Jaguars. I like some of the things they did in the draft. Uh, of course, they had a terrific season last year. Maybe it's the Steelers. Uh, you know, Big Ben's getting a little bit older, and they drafted uh, Mason Rudolph to be his replacement. And, uh, you know, he may play sooner rather than later because I don't think Ben's been able to get through his full season healthy in quite some time. And uh, But, you know, maybe it's the Steelers, the Jaguars. Maybe it's the Raiders with Gruden. But, you know, maybe the Bills, like we talked about, maybe they've done enough. Maybe Josh Allen is going to be that guy. But uh, I think their window is closing. But now the next question is, is, you know, who's going to rise up and be that team in the AFC? Well, it's going to be the Indianapolis Colts, of course. Duh, come on, Ed. Well, there you uh, go. Get with there it, man. Go. Come well, on. I forgot about that. <laughs> 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 hey, guys, let's kind of break down the last couple of days for, for some key teams. Obviously, uh, we feel like that the Cleveland Browns owned and dominated the draft so far this year. We'll start with them. Obviously, they uh, drafted number one overall, uh, Baker Mayfield. Uh, then they uh, drafted a guy from Ohio State, uh, Denzel Ward, in uh, number four overall. And then uh, – uh, a guy out of uh, uh, Nevada, Austin Cooper, uh, number 33 overall. Um, a, a running back, uh, Nick Chubb out of Georgia, uh, the other Chubb, and Miami defensive end Chad Thomas. I, you know, I'd give them a, 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 a day one grade, B, day two grade, A, maybe an overall grade of a B plus. But the thing about it is they went with the wrong Chubb, Ed. And, Rick, we'll go with you, Ed, and then we'll go to you, Rick. But go, <laughs> go ahead, Ed. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we talked about that on the draft uh, special that we had Thursday night. It's uh, it, Bradley Chubb was the guy. Pass rushers are hard to find. You could have put him opposite Miles Garrett and be set with the bookends. I mean, if, if we haven't learned anything about the NFL these last few years when it comes to the Super Bowl is that, you know, if you can pressure the quarterback, you can win the game. The Eagles did it against Brady. The Giants did it against Brady. Uh, you know, and why wouldn't you take a defensive end in that spot? Uh, but, you know, they took a cornerback. They like him. They think he'll be something. And, you know, to me, Tom and Rick, with that pick at 33, that, that guard from Nevada, I, you know, I'm not really sold on that. I think that was a, a reach to grab him. I thought I had him rated a little bit lower, but, you know, really, what do I know? But I still don't think he was the guy to take at 33. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe the Browns will be that team in the AFC. Boy, wouldn't that be weird if, the, if they're the team that rises up eventually? <laughs> and uh, unseats the Patriots no, with that team. No longer the mistake on the leg, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Rick, uh, what are your overall thoughts on the Cleveland Browns and so far what they've done in the draft uh, in, in days one and two? Well, Thursday night during our, our live show, I actually loved the, uh, the Baker Mayfield pick at number one, but I think I was just caught up in the whole shock and awe uh, of the whole thing. You know, it was a big surprise because we were talking about them taking Sam Darnold this whole time or – maybe an outside chance of taking roles and they took Baker Mayfield. So it was uh, interesting. It was surprising and I got caught up in it. But now that I've sat on it for like a day, uh, now I feel like the Browns are just going to, they're going to Browns because uh, they take Denzel Ward at, at number four with Bradley Chubb sitting there looking them straight in the face. So now I can't even take the Baker Mayfield pick seriously. Well, I tell you what, I worry about May Baker Mayfield for a lot of things. They say money never changes you, um, it, but it does, but it doesn't. But at the same time, I think he's just cocky enough to turn into another uh, Johnny Manziel. I hope I'm wrong about that. But certainly, I just think, again, this was a ri ri risky pick overall. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, certainly a lot of talk about them um, they're, they went with the Virginia Tech safety Terrell Edmonds, uh, the number 28 overall. Really wasn't uh, 
I didn't know where that came from, maybe a depth thing more than anything, but it just seemed like an odd number one pick. Oklahoma State, they picked uh, wide receiver James Washington, number 60 overall. Uh, Oklahoma State, uh, Mason Rudolph, number 76 overall. And Western Michigan, offensive tackle, and I'm not even going to try to say his name, Okaparo, uh, <laughs> number 92 overall. I give him a B, uh, and uh, nothing too exciting uh, from the Pittsburgh Steelers camp this year. Yeah, I think you can call that Okafor a guy just Chuck, right? Chucks, I think is what they call him, Chuck. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a lot easier. Yeah, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the Steelers have a good track record of developing players, and really that's what this is all about. You know, we, we talk so much about these players in this draft that you think, oh, my gosh, when they get drafted, these, this is going to be great. These guys are going to be great. Uh, but there, there's still developmental work that needs to be done, and the Steelers do a very good job of that. I think these guys they took, I know they all have question marks, and I, I'm not sure you couldn't have gotten a James Washington maybe a little bit later in the draft. I, I don't know, but, you know, he's got, he's got things to work on. Uh, Chucks, he's, got, uh, he's definitely a project, but, uh, you know, they can work with him. Uh, and then even that first-round pick you mentioned, Edmonds, that kind of came from out of nowhere. But, uh, again, it's about development with these guys. They certainly landed some players, and, you know, you can throw Mason Rudolph in there too, but they landed some players that have the ability uh, to get better. And now that's what it's all about is, you know, these coaching staffs across the league have to mold these players into NFL players. They're good college players, yeah, but now it's time to see what they can do developmentally. And I think these guys the Steelers pick all have pretty good upside. The Steelers have a good track record of, of developing players uh, and so I would expect that, you know, these guys will be heard from in the next, you know, year and beyond. I got a question Talking for with, Ed. Uh, Ed Kratz. Or, uh, hey, real quickly, real quickly, Rick. Uh, I'll, we'll get to you in just a second. I see that Mo has joined us. I'm open to the BS Sports Show. Mo, I know we've got you for a limited time because you've got a live remote that you've got to do today because you got you get paid to do radio stuff. So uh, we get that. We understand that. But we're kind of recapping the last couple of days of the draft. Uh, certainly, uh, we, we talked about the Colts' number one pick, uh, Quentin Nelson, and we talked a little bit about the risky pick of uh, uh, Baker Mayfield, and, and we were just talking a little bit about the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, uh, Mo, uh, what are your thoughts uh, over the last uh, – couple of days of the NFL draft overall? Well, I think, uh, you know, obviously some teams have gotten better. Some teams have taken risk. I, I think uh, when you look overall, I like what the, the Chicago Bears have done. Uh, you know, I like the moves the Colts have made. Uh, you know, I uh, I saw uh, uh, the odd phone call that uh, the Colts made to Quentin Nelson. Jim Irsay she did never be filmed doing anything. Good God, he seems like he's always high. And just out of his mind. Uh, but uh, that's so Quentin Nelson has signed up for, and uh, hey, it'll be interesting man. to see. Hey, man. Uh, we want to see you just knock people around the field, man. It's really cool to have you here, man. Wow. <laughs> that was classic. That was classic. Go, go ahead, Rick. I know you had a question for Ed. I just want to make sure we went to Mo as he's got a remote that he's got to do as well. Go ahead, uh, Rick. Yeah, we just talked about the Pittsburgh Steelers and the uh, the actual first uh, wide receiver taken in this draft was Martavis Bryant as the Steelers traded him away for a third round pick. Was that because Bryant did not want to be in Pittsburgh anymore or is there off the field issues that maybe we don't know that's why the Steelers uh, traded him away? Sure, and he kind of spoke out about that and uh, you know, I just think that instead of being a headache, the Steelers decided to rid themselves of that headache and uh, get a third-round pick for it. Great trade by them uh, to get such value for somebody like him. But, yeah, he's a talent, no question about it. But now he's got to be used and he's got to be happy. You know, he's one of those high-maintenance uh, type of players, and I think the Steelers are just tired of dealing with it. So, uh, Mo, let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about we were talking about the passing of the torch in the AFC. Maybe you could tell us who you think that might be. That We think that maybe that the AFC dominancy of the New England Patriots is coming to an end, that this could be the year that that's going to go away. So maybe give us your thoughts on that. But most importantly, let's look at the Houston Texans. I mean, they're going to be a thorn in our butt. The Jaguars are going to be a thorn in our butt. Uh, they picked up uh, a... a, a um, uh, Justin Reed out of Stanford, I believe, in the, in the number 68 overall, Mississippi State. They picked up a, a guy from Mississippi State. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people like what they've done in the draft. Every place I've seen, every grade I've seen with the Houston Texans, Mo, they've given them an A. 
We have got to figure out a way to stop Houston this year. Go ahead, Mo. Jacksonville, you know, with uh, with Andrew Luck returning from injury, that defensive backfield of uh, of Jacksonville will be worrisome. The defense, uh, the rush, the 